Welcome to Chainlink Research Reports, a YouTube series featuring research across the Web3 industry and academic fields with scholarship that expands our understanding of decentralized technologies. I'm Dr. Jason Anastasopoulos, a researcher at Chainlink Labs and a professor of public policy and statistics at the University of Georgia. In this episode on the Economics of Web3 series, I sit down with Dr. David Markian, a lecturer in marketing at the University of Bristol, who presents his research on factors leading individuals and institutions to adopt blockchain technology. And now, here's Dr. Markian. Uh, hi again, thank you very much for the invitation. Uh, today, I prepare several studies uh, under the uh, project of PACE, which is Privacy Aware Cloud Ecosystem Blockchain Adoption. These studies are prepared by Professor Savas Papayanidis, Rajiv Ranjan, Omer Rana, and by me. But before we discuss blockchain adoption, first, I would like to tell the importance of doing uh, blockchain adoption research from a user's perspective. Uh, first of all, we conducted several literature reviews on a blockchain, also on a technology acceptance and adoption. However, what we have noticed that both participant, participants and also researchers treat blockchain or blockchain-based services technologies as a black box. But given the rapid digitalization, especially with COVID-19 and forced adoption of technology, many uh, people uh, reported privacy concerns and uh, actually uh, more and more editorials are coming out where they ask to examine the role of security and privacy when it comes to online shopping. However, uh, in literature, we can find the, 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 there is a strong focus on the technical aspect of blockchain rather than understanding what people or users think about any service which is based on a blockchain. Uh, so, first of all, I will just quickly go through the literature review. Uh, this is a non-technical paper. I will just quickly present the definition that we used in our studies. So, we borrowed the uh, blockchain definition from prior literature, which is a technology which made it possible to build an immutable, distributed, always available, secure, and publicly accessible repository of data which relies on distributed consensus protocol to manage this repository in a distributed manner. Also the immutability control and openness of blockchain enable data transparency, traceability also increase or ensures privacy and security. The distributed data exchange increases the system's resilience to withstand any potential cyber attacks by allocating information to other nodes if one has been attacked, thus strengthening security. However, we found in literature review that uh, uh, underlying, while there is evidence that underlying technologies such as blockchain enhances the security and privacy of digital transactions, however, individuals have a little awareness about blockchain technology and how it works. Even when they use a blockchain uh, based services, they do not know that it is blockchain. When they see the word blockchain, they think that this technology is very difficult or complex to use. For a typical user, it is difficult to understand the benefits of blockchain technologies. And uh, by the time when we conduct these studies, only few research uh, studies examine blockchain adoption from a user's perspective, and uh, they mainly focus uh, on a cryptocurrency. However, we all know that blockchain is not, I mean, while it is about cryptocurrency, it is not always about cryptocurrency. Even the, like simple services can be still be based on a blockchain. Given the uh, literature review, we came up with uh, two research gaps. First, that there is a lack of insights into users' perception of services and applications that enabled by a blockchain, or simply there is a lack of user-centric approach. Uh, and also there is a need to understand the motivational factors that contribute to the adoption and acceptance of blockchain-enabled services or technology. So uh, given the aforementioned research gaps, we uh, have uh, three objectives to cover in this study. The first one is to examine individuals' perception of attributes of blockchain-enabled applications, explore cognitive processes underpinning the adoption decision, 
by using protection motivation theory and also to examine use, a user's perception of attributes of blockchain enabled application by employing the diffusion of innovation theory. So the first study or first model is based on the protection motivation theory, which is rooted in the expectancy value paradigm. Basically, theory postulates that individuals maladaptive or adaptive behavior is driven by the expectancy that it will result in the consequences, for instance, threats. Uh, adaptive behavior is the activities that one should take to eliminate the th threats. And the, in this particular case, the adaptive behavior or recommended behavior is to adopt or use blockchain enabled services. Maladaptive behavior is the avoidance of the recommended activities. In this particular case, avoiding using or adopting blockchain enables uh, services. Also theory postulates that when the, uh, coping appraisals and threat appraisals result in a behavior change, or at least there is, uh, they impact individual's behavior. The second study or second model is based on the diffusion of innovation theory. This is very well established and popular theory when it comes to the examining adoption and uh, use of new technology. So the theory postulates that users get exposed to persuasive information about adoption, which forms expectations about the degree to which the innovation meets five criteria, thus triggering their adoption intention. Uh, so the factors, uh, uh, in this theory or in this framework are the relative advantage, computability, complexity, trailability, and observability. However, given that these projects or these studies were uh, not about extending theory or developing new, th new theory, still we, it is wrong to call that we attempted to extend the theory, but we attempted to include extra variables such as perceived privacy and perceived security through a conceptual pilot and through analyzing the blockchain uh, relevant literature. Basically, after conducting a literature review where identified when it comes to adoption of blockchain, it is important also to consider the impact of perceived privacy and perceived security. At a later stage, I will uh, tell a bit more about conceptual pilot. So here is the overview of the research models. The first model is about cognitive processes and the impact on intention to adopt blockchain enabled services. And the second one is the innovation attributes, uh, which also impact intention to adopt blockchain enabled uh, services. Here you can see the research model and hypothesis. Basically, in the left hand side, you can see the two blocks, blocks of factors, the threat appraisals and coping appraisals. Threat appraisals include perceived threat vulnerability, perceived threat severity, self-efficacy, response efficacy, and response cost. Uh, both uh, threat appraisals and coping appraisals impact individuals' intention to use blockchain-enabled services. All the proposed hypotheses were justified uh, using the principles of the theory or the findings of prior literature. Here, the second model, you can see the first five factors are uh, borrowed from diffusion of information uh, theory, which includes relative advantage, computability, trailability, observability, and complexity. And we extended this model, uh, including perceived privacy and perceived security. Uh, while the first five hypotheses are uh, justified using the principles of the theory. The next two factors are, uh, the hypotheses are justified using the findings of prior literature. When it comes to the methodology part, we use the De Vignettes, uh, like uh, study with a hypothetical scenario about the potential use case and the services of blockchain based application in the context of shopping. This is very important to note that this study was conducted in the context of shopping. Uh, and the, for, for the data collection, we used independent research company to avoid introducing any researcher bias. Uh, we use purposeful sampling. Uh, we conducted pilot study, conceptual pilot study, and conceptual pilot study is basically similar to the main survey. However, uh, we included several extra open-ended questions to see 
individual's views and uh, what will motivate them to adopt blockchain enabled services. Uh, we developed two research models and ended up with 506 valid responses. Uh, for, for all measurements were bo borrowed from prior literature uh, to ensure the scale reliability and validity, we conducted factor loadings and Kronbach uh, uh, also calculated Kronbach alpha. Uh, there is cross loadings of measurement items. So then we did the correlation and regression analysis. Uh, so here you can see the uh, profile of the respondents. While education and gender is reasonably balanced, uh, but future studies need to replicate our model or extend it by uh, uh, using a sample with, uh, with the aging population as only 3% of our sample is 65 or older. So it is very important to understand what uh, people who are 65 or older think about using blockchain enabled services, given uh, the forced adoption and also the rapid digitalization. Uh, as I mentioned before, all the measurement items for both models were borrowed from prior literature. You can see here uh, the perceived threat severity, perceived threat vulnerability, response efficacy, response cost, self-efficacy, intention to use. Uh, the, uh, the loadings were above seven and uh, the Kronbach alpha coefficient in all cases were above eight, uh, 0.8. Same for the second model. Uh, here is uh, here are the mean standard deviation and correlation coefficient. But however, let's be focused on the path analysis. So when we conducted uh, the regression analysis uh, for the first model, we ended up supporting all the hypotheses, but the second one. So we found non-significant uh, relationship between perceived threat severity and intention to use. And actually this is a quite interesting finding we, because it, first of all, it goes against the principles of the theory. Also, it goes against the logic because people reported that they think uh, when they shop online, uh, they it is kind of risky and uh, they uh, feel, feel uh, that they might suffer financial loss. However, it is not significant. And the only explanation uh, when it comes to this uh, specific uh, relationship is that individuals think uh, that they are protected by third parties or by banks. And uh, it is important to mention that our sample was uh, from uh, UK. So here uh, they believe that in case if they suffer any financial uh, loss, banks will reimburse them the money. Uh, for the second model, uh, the uh, all hypotheses but two were supported. And when it comes to the terrability and intention to use, uh, it was kind of expected to be non-significant relationship because it is difficult first to try blockchain enabled services, then decide whether uh, you want to use it or not. Uh, because most of the time when you come across the services, they are either blockchain uh, enabled or not. And uh, uh, again, uh, it's surprising finding that the perceived uh, privacy and uh, there is no significant relationship between perceived privacy and intention to use. And similar to perceived threat severity, the only explanation is that people, while they think that the threat is there, but they do not think it is severe enough. So they think if something happens, banks or third parties will reimburse their money in case if they uh, suffer financial losses. So we hope we uh, uh, Just do me a quick favor. Uh, could you go back to the, 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 some of the findings for the path analysis? Yeah. Yes, yeah, sure. So yeah, one thing I, I think a, a lot of people would be interested in, in um, understanding a bit more deeply is for each of these paths, like let's say uh, um, we'll start out at the top, like per perceived threat vulnerability, um, what is it exactly, uh, like precisely that people are being um, like uh, like threatened by, and and like what, can you maybe explain what the exact um, vulnerability that is being perceived for, for, and then maybe go you know do the same thing with self efficacy and and, and uh, response efficacy and response cost if, if that would be okay. 
Yeah, sure. Thank you very much for the question. So in this particular context, perceived threat vulnerability is all about how vulnerable people think that they are to, uh, let's say, hacks or when they do uh, online shopping that they will suffer financial uh, loss. When it comes to the self-efficacy, it is all about their inner, let's say, confirmation or whether they think they can deal with complex technology such as blockchain enabled services. Response efficacy, it is all about uh, how effective they think that blockchain enabled services are to protect them. And the response cost is all about how much mental or financial uh, effort they need to invest in the using blockchain enabled services. Thank you. Uh, and maybe could you explain the other ones as well, the, the bottom ones? That'd be really helpful. Oh, sure, sure. Uh, so uh, when it comes to the relative advantage, it's it's kind of self-explanatory. So it's all about the benefits of uh, using blockchain-enabled uh, services compared to same services that are not blockchain-enabled. Compatibility is all about whether they uh, it is compatible, or compatible in terms of, uh, let's say, uh, their lifestyle or specific device that they are using. Trability uh, is all about whether they have the opportunity to try the service or technology first before embarking on using it. Observability is similar to trability, but it is more about whether they have opportunity to see how others use blockchain enabled serv uh, services in this particular co context. Uh, complexity is all about ease of use. So whether they think that blockchain enabled services are easy to use or not, uh, uh, and uh, perceived privacy and perceived security is all about uh, whether they think that blockchain enabled services will ensure their privacy and security. Great, thanks. Thank you very much for the question. So we hope uh, that uh, these studies contributed to blockchain literature, also technology acceptance literature by providing evidence about the user's perspective, for instance, exploring cognitive factors. From practical viewpoint, the findings of this pa uh, paper provide implications for the user-centric development and promotion of a blockchain compared to a more like technical oriented approaches. And just I have a bonus material for you. I hope you will find it interesting. We included several extra questions to understand whether people are actually ready to pay for a blockchain enabled services. And it is surprising, but over 50% of our respondents were ready to pay some percentage of the transaction cost to use uh, blockchain enabled services. Thank you very much. Please let me know if you have any questions. Yeah, thank you very much. Uh, David, did I pronounce your name correctly? Oh, yes. Thank you. Yeah, that was that was excellent. Very interesting uh, presentation on some of the behavioral and kind of, um, in many ways, personality determinants of, uh, of blockchain adoption, which uh, is something that people are very are very interested in. So I kind of have some, uh, I would say, more general questions uh, at the beginning and, and some specific ones. So maybe I'll start with some of the specific questions. So um, in terms of the, the people that you sampled, I mean, what, what was the, of course we know in statistics that, and of course, you know, as a researcher uh, that, you know, the population that you sample from is important. So do you have external validity and so on? Um, so I was wondering how the population that you had sampled from for this particular study was drawn and what your thoughts are on how representative that might they might be of a more general population, either in the United States or around the world. So if you could speak to that, that'd be really helpful. Uh, thank you very much uh, for your question. It's a great one. And actually, obviously, one of the future research suggestions is to test or extend the models using a sample from the United States or uh, Europe, China. However, uh, we think that it is reasonable, uh, like reasonably balanced or representative when it comes to the UK, because we try to use independent research uh, company uh, in order to select 
people who who actually can reply. So of course it, it introduced some limitations because some of them might not have access to internet or obviously they need to be uh, over 18 to answer the questions. And, they, uh, and also, as I mentioned, that only 3% of our sample was 65, uh, age of 65 or older. So definitely we need uh, to test the same model or extend it using an aging population. So it is reasonably representative. So that will be my answer. I see. And, and what would you say? Would you say representative of a kind of world population or was it a specific uh, nation or? I would go with the United Kingdom because United there are Kingdom, more, right. yeah, more and more studies are coming that the That's culture right. plays significant role when it comes to technology adoption and acceptance. Gotcha. So one thing that interests me as well is uh, is your motivation. Not perhaps not you personally, but uh, if you could feel if you feel comfortable speaking on behalf of your team, your team's motivation in trying to understand why people um, adopt blockchain and what some of the barriers to adoption are. So if you could speak to what kind of motivated the paper in the first place, that would be uh, that would be really great. Oh, thank you very much for the question. So basically, our motivation to conduct a research from a user's perspective was all about that you know, we had a team of engineers who were working a new, I mean, new or a bit more developed blockchain services, but, uh, but people were not, I mean, general population didn't really accept it. So they didn't know about it or when they, conducted uh, several uh, surveys about the use of blockchain. You, you always, the, they receive a responses that it is difficult to use, but uh, without any further justification why it, it was difficult to use. So we decided it is important to come up with uh, research models that will explain individuals intention to use blockchain enabled services. So that was our motivation. Now, when you mentioned blockchain enabled services, what do you think it is that people, uh, when you mention those words, are thinking about on the basis of your research or your experience with, um, with kind of surveying people? Like, in other words, if, if I were to ask a person randomly on the street, uh, how do you feel about, you know, blockchain enabled services and what concerns you most about them? Like, what is it that you think they would be thinking about uh, when that word was mentioned? Basically, uh, they think about cryptocurrency. Uh, they cannot like really, I mean, of course, some uh, know a, a bit more about blockchain enabled services and, uh, but they cannot imagine that uh, services such as eBay might be a blockchain enabled. So they think it's something to do with a, uh, cryptocurrency or any financial data. So they kind of tell that, no, we don't want to be engaged with any blockchain enabled services. I see. And so, you know, that kind of leads me to a follow-up question, which is based on some of the, uh, some of the sample that you have. Now, of course, it seems as if you don't have enough of a sample to answer this question uh, in a precise way, but, um, one thing that I find very interesting, of course, when you're talking about the adoption of any new technology is, is the fact that different age groups will respond to it in different ways. And so, you know, you would expect that the younger people would be more open to adopting new technologies and perhaps they even know more about how to use digital currency and blockchain. Uh, they've heard more about it in their circles. Whereas older people, when they hear it, you know, it might um, resonate with them as being something that is either illicit or uh, something that just it doesn't make any sense. Um, did you did you by any chance have a have any chance to do an analysis where you looked at uh, some of the results of your study uh, between different age groups to kind of explore? these heterogeneous um, kind of effects? And, and if so, well, did you, what, would, what did you find? 
Oh, actually, unfortunately, I do not have answer for that uh, particular question, but uh, we are planning to do something similar because as you mentioned, it, it, there is a gap when it comes to the different age groups and you really need to understand the difference between, uh, let's say, when they are 18 till 25 or 65 or older. So it will be, maybe will be one of our next studies. Great, yeah, I'd be really curious to hear more about that, uh, especially with regards to, to age group, because I think, you know, that would certainly be something that, that uh, where you would get the very different results, you know. Um, so uh, just one more kind of general question, and that is kind of a big picture question about the research you've been doing and the uh, particularly the papers that you presented here today. And that is, if you were to kind of summarize, uh, you know, of all the factors that you've explored, what is the one kind of mo most um, important factor preventing blockchain adoption, right, from a negative standpoint? And then what is, what would you say the most important factor is that leads people to blockchain adoption? Um, do you know what I mean? Like, do you have any, uh, any thoughts about that from, from this research? And would you be able to summarize that into maybe two total kind of, uh, um, you know, motivations? So like, maybe yes. let's start off with like, with, uh, with, with just, uh, avoidance. So, so, so what would you say is the major factor preventing people from adopting blockchain. Now we saw in your path analysis uh, results that there were several different factors, each of which had different um, coefficient strengths and so on. But if you were to say uh, which, which of those, you know, if we were to look at the model and say, well, okay, which, which is the strongest preventing people, the strongest negative factor preventing people from adopting blockchain, yeah. which would you say that would be? And then we could talk about you know, the other, the other. Uh, yeah, sure. Uh, I think response cost will be uh, the factor that actually inhibit the adoption and acceptance of blockchain. Because for some reason, people think that they need to invest a mental effort when it comes to the use of blockchain enabled uh, services. And it is not so much about the financial part of investment, but it's more about that they think that they need to learn something new to use a blockchain enabled services. I, I, and uh, actually it's kind of similar, but where, uh, when we think about the factor that actually motivates them to uh, use a blockchain, yeah, it, it is all about self-efficacy. And self-efficacy is like uh, their inner belief that they can deal with the uh, blockchain technology. Even if they think it is difficult to use, the inside they think, okay, yeah, it's difficult, but I can uh, like use it. So we found that self-efficacy is the factor that actually has a strongest impact on the individual's intention to use a blockchain. That's very interesting. So, and then, and those two things are kind of linked in a way, right? So yeah, yeah. The, on, on, the, on the one hand, you have the barrier being people's beliefs that they can't use blockchain because they don't have the technical skills or something like that. And on the other hand, when people do have the belief that they're able to, even if it might be difficult to master the technical skills and uh, you know whatever other skills might be necessary for using blockchain, um, when they believe that they have those skills, then they uh, are, are more willing to uh, to use it. So that that's very interesting. So a lot of it really comes down to uh, kind of yeah, like you like the, like the word the phrase that you use, uh, self efficacy. How 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 able am I? Like the belief in, in oneself, right? Yeah. To to be able to effectively utilize blockchain is seems to be driving both driving people away from it and to it at the same time. That's very interesting. Um, okay, so that's pretty much all the questions I have for you, uh, David. So um, thank you very much for your time. I really appreciate it. And uh, for Chainlink Research Reports, my name is Jason Anastasopoulos. Thanks for watching. Thank you very much for the invitation.